Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We gonna, we gonna give them two more minutes to get in here, y'all. We gonna give them two more minutes to get in here, y'all. I know everybody noticing. Everybody noticing that we got a different choir tonight, and I'm explain what's going on. I'm explain what's going on. Oh, the audio. Hold on. Is the audio better now? Is the audio better now? Can y'all hear me better now? Okay. Deacon Francis, when he fucked up the air condition, when he, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all everything that's going on. We got a lot going on with the church, y'all. Y'all, we're going through a lot of changes. It's a lot going on. There's a lot of pressure on me trying to hold the congregation together. Y'all get on in here. Get on in here. I told y'all to get here early. Thanks, thanks to everybody who got here early. I got the receipt. Some of y'all young people that's up in the front, can y'all please get up and let some of the older people sit down, please? See, I don't know what's wrong with this new generation. Y'all ain't got no respect for your elder people, please. Some of y'all young teeny boppers in the front, can y'all please get up and let some of the older people sit down? Let some of the senior citizen people sit down. Don't forget, y'all, we got refreshments in the vestibule. We got refreshments up in the front. What they say? What you say, Brother Jones? Hold on. If you driving a champagne color Buick LeSable, what's the license plate number? WX3149 and you is parked in that white lady grass. She getting ready to tow you. If you is driving a champagne color, they say it got a garbage bag on the back passenger window and a dirty car seat in the bike. If you driving that, they finna talk, that white lady is mad. I told y'all that we leased out the Kroger parking lot across the street and for y'all to park over there in the Kroger parking lot. Now listen, we trying to get some money together to get a church van, a church bus, so we can help pick up some of the senior people and get them here earlier so they can have somewhere to sit. Y'all come on in here. Come on in here. It's 801. It's 801. Y'all get on in here and sit down. Hurry up and sit down quick. It ain't no saving seats. Pick up them scarves and them dirty ass Michael Kors bags and stuff and scoot on over. Let people sit down. Let the people sit down. Go ahead. All of y'all out there in the vestibule, go ahead and get your waters and come on in. We got a lot to talk about today and a lot to address. If y'all park in any of them people grass, they is going to tow y'all car. All right? Now, half of y'all, they looking for your car anyway. Don't You don't want to be embarrassed down to the church and don't know the difference between whether your car got repossessed or whether it got towed for people paying on parking on the people grass. If you know you ain't paid your car note and you know you parked in the wrong place, you might want to go take your car across the street right now to Kroger and come back on over. But ain't no saving no seats now. Get on in here. It's 802. Two more minutes. We're going to get this church service started. We got our home.
Hello, 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 hello. Can y'all hear me now? Hold on, hold on. What not happen? We can hear now. Can y'all hear me now? Okay, my I just got a thing to say. My friend Aaron say we can hear now. No, still no sound. You on mute? No sound. Ain't no. We can. We can't hear. No sound. No sound. No sound. Let me see. No sound. Witchcraft. No sound. No sound. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on, let me call, let me see. Hold on, let me call my friend. Hey, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, listen, I don't know what's going on with some of y'all. The people that's calling saying they can hear. Some can and some can't, like from the, what they're saying. Some people can hear, some people can't. Oh, Lord, I don't hear nothing. Let me see. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Let me see. What should I do here? They say they read in lips. Yes. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, where's the sound? The sound cut out. Let me see. I don't understand. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Let me see here. Let me see here. Yeah, Aaron, stay on the line with me. Yeah, of course. Stay on the line with me really quickly. Stay on the line with me really quickly. Yes, we can hear. The sound is back. Okay, I just checked it. It's back. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. I can't hear. The sound back on. I just, listen, y'all. I just, we hear you. Hit the light button. Stop saying, throwing out on mute. No sound. I can hear y'all. I don't know what to say. Let me see. The devil is busy. Take your time. The devil. Q, get the sound. I can't read. I don't know what's going on. I just logged in on YouTube and I can hear it. Yeah, I can still hear you. And you can still hear me. Let me see. The people, yeah. I just logged on to my own and I can hear myself just fine. Let's see. I just logged on. Yeah. To my own and I can hear myself just fine. We hear you. Yes, you good. Okay, they say we can hear now. I okay, they all right. Oh. All right, bye Aaron. Bye. Bye. Okay, everybody say the sound on. Okay, better. Everybody can hear. So let me tell y'all what's going on. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on with the church. It's a lot. The sound back on. It's the sound back on. Most of us can hear you. Go ahead, Funky. We can hear. All right. Let me tell y'all what's going on. Listen, y'all. We got a lot going on at the church. All right. Deacon Francis told us that he could fix the air conditioning. He could save us some money so we didn't have to go get no bids. We let Deacon Francis go to fix the air conditioner and he got it working in the front, but he don't fuck it up in the bike and it ain't working upstairs. In the midst of Deacon Francis trying to fix the air conditioner, he bust the pipe and the water came all down through the ceiling. So the women's restroom is out of commission for tonight because the ceiling in the women's restroom is about to collapse on the people. So ladies, Y'all going to either have to pee outside, y'all going to have to go to the Kroger, or y'all going to have to go in the men's bathroom with the transgenders. All right? That's just the best that we could do for right now. Now, we had to fire the choir director because we found out that he was an undercover sissy, and he was messing with some of the boys from Vacation Bible School. Okay, so the church is currently doing an investigation. We don't want this to get out. Plus, the choir ain't sound about right since Sister Jones went on the glory. So I went down there to the...
Presbyterian church and borrow these white people and they're going to come in. Hopefully they don't sing no boring hymnals to death. But down at the white church, they do background checks on the people and none of these people is on the sex offender registry. So until we can get everything going on with the background checks, you know, getting the altos and the sopranos to stop fighting off all of them fucking the tennis. People stop singing sharp and, st and start singing on key. We just have to go have to deal with Margaret, Penelope, Frank, and Bob for the time being. Hopefully, we'll have a new choir director and we'll be holding um, rehearsal for for a new choir this weekend because you know it's just a lot going on and we don't want our church in the news. Uh, additionally, before we get service started, uh, thank you, Usher Boy number two and number three for stepping up because Usher Boy number one said they was tired from working all week. And the singles ministry has, uh, meeting has been canceled after church tonight because the church is hot, the bathroom broken. We got sexual abuse allegations going on in the choir. And half y'all whores anyway. And even Jesus himself may not be able to save some of y'all. So we just going to have to table that to another time. Last but not least, y'all might have noticed that we don't have valet car service today. Uh, several people's cars got scratched and vandalized yesterday. And one sister car got stolen. She was standing out to the church till 11 o'clock. The valet took her ticket, told them they was coming. And she was standing out there until 11 o'clock at night until Deacon Jones came back to lock the church up, lock the gate up, and gave her a ride. This was one of our senior people. She didn't have no more minutes left on her Obama phone. Nobody was at the church. And she was just standing out there all night by herself. And she couldn't even walk home because she just had a hip replacement and she needed her car. So we had to get rid of the valet service. We had to get rid of the choir director. Y'all just got to work work with us. Okay, that's why y'all need to put something in the cash app collection plate or the super chat because we got a lot going on. The church is currently located in a gentrified area. You know, one block is good, one block is bad. We just trying to do the Lord's work. And they said churches were ever two or more people assemble. And this is where we could afford. So, you know, I ain't going to let these white folks sing all through the service. They can sing us on the way out. But thank y'all from St. Mary's Catholic Episcopal Presbyterian Church for lending us y'all quiet on Thursday. Because I know that y'all could have been somewhere eating green bean casserole and potato salad with raisins tonight. But you chose to be here to fellowship with us. Now, uh, now that we got the church updates out off the, off the menu. Yesterday's service, y'all, was absolutely amazing. And what started as us just playing around is really beginning to shape into something very magical, creative, and fun. I really do love this creative, imaginary family, village, church community that we have built and i love how all of us interact with one another and i'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all i went back to yesterday's service and i watched when we was forming the committees for what the government cabinet should be y'all and that shit was just sheer genius it was fun it was funny i mean we were all in just the the, rec the recommendations and the nominations had me hollering and i was like you know what q how can you build in more segments like that where we can have fun with each other every night so guys you know i had a lot of fun with that segment i had a lot of fun um when we got a little deep talking about the migrant story about the migrants having to move from off the field and move into the school we had a lot of fun doing that and so, you know, as we begin to, to get the church service together, I want you guys' input on what segments you guys would like to see 
Um, but we're definitely going to do an interactive segment. I'm going to try to do one every service where we plan either plan a funeral or plan a government or plan something. Of course, um, I'm really fascinated now with this immigration situation. So I'm thinking every show, every other show, we're going to have a migrant affairs story. Um, of course, we're going to do our reality TV and gossip, music and movies. And we're going to have all of that. So before we get the show really, really underway, um, I'm going to touch on this thing one more time. And, and for me, this is going to be the end of it. Uh, you know, I don't know why Claudia Jordan won't leave me alone. And she went on her live yesterday. And, uh, you know, I didn't watch it because I have no interest in watching anything that's going to upset me. But all of the headlines now are Claudia Jordan says Funky Dineva can't pay his rent. Funky Dineva in Miami struggling to pay his rent. Y'all, that shit's not even worth addressing. Now, we all know many years ago I had that issue in Atlanta with old girl. I just don't think that there's any person alive on this side of the Mason Dixon line that honestly believes Funky Dineva is having a financial problem. <laughs> it's, it, it, the shit is laughable. All right. I live my life too fabulously out loud to not be able to pay my rent, Miss Jordan. Additionally, people who are struggling financially do not walk away from jobs that are paying $250,000 a year. If I walked away from two fifty, dollars imagine how much I have and how much I'm making. I do not now, nor have I ever since I've been in Miami, had a problem paying my rent, okay? I'm going to let you have this one because I'm really ready for this situation to be done. I've proven my point. I've won this war and this battle from this moment on. I'm really done with it. Just leave me alone. This whole thing was done. When I left Fox Soul, I left amicably. I did a nice video. You and Al did a nice loving farewell to me that I thought was genuine. And that was the end of it. Then all of a sudden I wake up Claudia Jordan says, Funky Dineva's no Taraji P. Henson. Claudia Jordan says, we were making a cute coin. Claudia Jordan, you're doing interviews. You're throwing jabs on air. We're talking about the budget cuts at Fox Soul. They're referring to me. You know the other underhanded shit that you did and the things that you've been doing that I'm not going to reveal just yet if you leave me alone. All was well when I parted ways with Fox Soul. None of this had to be. None of it had to be. But you decided to insert yourself into something that had nothing to do with you and you made it personal. And now we are where we are today. Miss Mamas, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Let's just leave it alone. All right. Let's get this service started. First thing up. Just hilarious in the breakfast club. Child, what's going on? Now, a lot of people, y'all running with the story. Oh, you know, just hilarious. Got fired from the breakfast club. Just hilarious. This, 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 this. Let me be the first person to say that. All of it, all of it is speculation, all right? All of it is speculation. Nobody knows the truth about anything. All of these YouTube journalists and social media journalists, um, you know, running to, running to social media talking about, um, running the social media talking about oh she fired she fired she prematurely made the announcement before they could and they mad and they fired her y'all don't know that y'all don't know that so stop making up stories and running with them now to your defense 
it does look like Jess made an announcement prematurely and maybe the ink was not signed on the contract. And for whatever reason, the contract may have fallen through. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, we don't know the truth about any of it. And so, until we get the truth, hear me, y'all. Until we get the truth, y'all got to leave it alone. Now, Charlemagne and Envy, I don't take them to be great actors, right? And they were like, ah, oh, what's going on? What's going on? I thought we had it. I'm tired of these rotating judges. I'm tired of da 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 and for all we know, y'all, they could be trolling us. They literally could be trolling us. And then she's going to come on this Friday. I don't know. If Just Hilarious ends up not being the Breakfast Club permanent host, then this thing is really embarrassing for her. And I'm going to tell you something, guys. For whatever reason, I'm taking this story particularly personal because... Jess Hilarious comes from the same space I do. She comes from the social media space. And, you know, when you're, when, when you're in this space, the greater entertainment world tries to make you feel like you're less than. Oh, you're just a YouTuber. Oh, you're just an Instagram star. Oh, you're just a TikToker. And it creates this psychology where all of us are trying to prove the naysayers wrong and get to the next. We're trying to get to radio. We're trying to get to TV. And I know that, you know, going from just doing accidental videos online to the Breakfast Club is a huge jump for anyone's career. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I, I hope that this uh, is all a hoax and that, you know, Jess Hilarious does indeed have the job because if not, this is really, 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 really embarrassing. And not only do I want this for Jess, I want this for Jess because I want it for all of us who have started in the social media space that the big media moguls can see that you can take the little people who are not of the industry and make them a part of the industry. But we need to hold off on the speculation with Jess Hilarious until we figure out or she says something about what was going on. Speaking of the Breakfast Club, honey, Miss Andrew Gillum got her ass on the Breakfast Club this morning. I'm going to tell you my thing about that girl. She keep pissing me off. She keep pissing me off. Andrew Gillum keep, what did she say? Andrew Gillum got on the Breakfast Club and Charlemagne asked him, what do you have to say about the situation? And he was like, what situation? And Andrew likened the situation to, you know, oh, you know, I mean, I just went out to have a good time just like anyone else. And someone put a roofie or a quaalude in my cup. And for the next six hours, I, I just have no memory. Girl, please get off our line with that bullshit, all right? Please get off our line with that bullshit. First and foremost, you are already forced to do an interview next to your wife, AJ, announcing that you were bisexual, okay? That's number one. You's a bisexual. You is a bisexual. You already had to do that, number one. So that's one layer to the story. Secondly, you didn't go out with just anybody you went out with your lover and your secretary working every day of the week. The people was able to go back through your social media with your bisexual ass and saw you with that white homosexual. Okay, we got a black bisexual with a white homosexual. Now, did that white homosexual put something in your cup? He probably did. But you're not finna reduce this to just no, oh, just innocent night of fun and something happened. Nah, you was going with that white homosexual. And quiet as it's kept, I don't even know if the people truly believe 
you bisexual. The people think you's a black homosexual. I, 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 it ain't none of my business and I don't care because I'm a black homosexual too. So it really don't matter, especially in 2024. But just, we want to like you, Andrew. We do like you. Us Floridians, we mad because your ass don't fuck up the thing. We needed you to be the next damn governor. We needed you to be the next governor. And now you gone. And we stuck with DeSantis and the shit that he got going on. At least, Andrew, come back in a redeeming way. Come back authentic. Don't come back with all this political speak, trying to speak around in circles. Yes, there you know, was some foul play involved with what you did. But at best, Andrew, just say that's my past and I don't want to talk about it no more. But when you try to play on people's dome, you know what I'm saying, after the truth has already semi been put out there, it just makes you look disingenuous it makes you you know look like a liar it takes us back to when this scandal first happened and it makes us feel like we kind of just don't even want to fool up with our brother no more because he lied like come on uh let's move on let's move on real quick do y'all fuck with sweet tea from married to madison do the girls fuck with Sweet Tea from Mary to Madison? These lights getting the best of me. Let me tell y'all something. I like Sweet Tea. And I'm going to tell you why I like Sweet Tea. I like Sweet Tea because... She has not been tainted by the reality television gods as of yet. She has not been tainted as of yet. Now, I talked to Dr. Heavenly on the phone yesterday or the day before yesterday, and we were talking about the argument that her and Sweetie had. And Dr. Heavenly said, I said, Dr. Heavenly, she was sticking with your ass. And Dr. Heavenly was like, yes, she was. She said, I'm going to tell you one thing about her. She said, she ain't scared. She said, one thing about Sweet Tea is she ain't scared. I respect that. I've been around these reality girls for uh, over a decade, and y'all really don't know how hard it is psychologically when these new girls come into the picture trying to get into the fold. You know, they all come in trying to kiss ass and be meek or whatever the case may be. And Sweet Tea ain't playing with heavenly ass. Whether she won the argument or not, I like the fact that she is not scared. And I think that that is needed in these reality TV atmospheres in order to keep things authentic. But let's talk about what y'all really want to talk about, which is Dr. Damon cheating. All right. Do y'all believe, do y'all believe Dr. Damon has cheated on Dr. Heavenly? I don't put nothing past nobody, but I honestly don't believe it. And I'm going to tell you why I don't believe it. And let, me, let me back up. And if he did cheat on Dr. Heavenly, he did it the right way. If there's a right way to cheat, he did it in a way in which it did not hit the fan. He did it in a way in which she's not embarrassed. Y'all need me to slow the chat down? Let me slow the chat down. Let me slow the chat down. Hold on. Let me slow the chat down. He did it in such a way where she's not embarrassed. He did it in such a way. What they call it? Respectful cheating. Is that what they call it? Respectful cheating. Let me see if I can get it here. Ooh. 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 Let me see if I can get it here. And uh, slow this chat down real quick for y'all. Screen, screen, manage, manage, manage. Let me see, y'all. Y'all got me in the middle of the service view activity. Let me see, edit, customization, slow mo. All right, here we go. 
I'm going to put the chat on 170 seconds. There we go. All right. That should have slowed the chat down. That should have slowed the chat down. All right. I think I slowed the chat down. I do got a few moderators, but I do need some more. Anyway, if he did cheat on her, he did it in such a way. He did it in such a way that it ain't hit the dog on fan. Don't nobody know who it is. Dr. Heavenly has been on that show for 10 years now, and we've got no mistress who have ran to a blog. We've got no bloggers with no receipts. And I'm sorry, in 2024, and I told y'all this in 2023, I am no longer accepting. I'm no longer accepting. Oh, I heard. Oh, my sister work at the hospital. My sister, a nurse at the same hospital that he work at. And she say he always be with. I'm not accepting that no more. Do you see how easy that is to do? Do you see how easy that is? Loretta Harris, you said, and, and I'm, I said Mar Mariah said she had receipts. As much as Mariah hated Dr. Heavenly, as much turmoil as Mariah was going through when they got her off that show and she was trying to get back and she was fighting for that show, as much disdain as Mariah still has for Dr. Heavenly, them receipts would have hit the fan. And let me ask y'all a question. Why, of all people in the whole Atlanta, would Mariah have receipts on Dr. Damon and not anybody else? Of all the people in Atlanta, Mariah's got the receipts. Why ain't nobody else got the receipts? She can't, she, she, the, she the damn bookkeeper of infidelity. And y'all got mad with me and y'all thought, because y'all love to hurl that word bias around with me. And that's why, that's another reason why I kind of left the reality TV reviews alone. And that's another reason why I consciously made a choice that moving forward, I will never let y'all know any longer who in the entertainment industry I know. Because the moment y'all see me take a photo with one person, have a drink with one person, then I go to give my commentary because that's the person you don't like. All of a sudden, I'm labeled biased. I have said the same thing about Marceau and Tisha. Now, here is the thing, right? You've got Marceau, the real person, and then you've got Marceau, the character that he plays on that doggone TV show. Do I think Marceau has cheated around on Tisha? The way he acted on that show? Probably so. Probably. Probably so. The way he acts on the show. But I also know that being that dickhead character that's that's got you, you like him, but you hate him, is also something that Marceau gets off on. Lastly, y'all so quick to want to damn those people's marriage. Where the lady at? Where she at? Where she at? Come on now. Everybody else side chick is so quick to want to run to the blogs. Where she at? And if he did cheat on Tisha, if he did cheat on Tisha, he cheated on her the right way. The way that y'all need to be asking y'all fucking husbands to do. Because see, y'all husbands cheating on y'all and embarrassing y'all and got y'all somewhere crying, watching, waiting to exhale, ready to burn up his clothes. Y'all want to make Tisha believe that her husband cheated on her so bad. And maybe he did. And maybe he is. And maybe he did pay her off, according to some of y'all. But bitch, ain't that the right motherfucking thing to do? Ain't that the right thing to do? At least he had enough. If he did do it, at least he had enough respect for his goddamn wife to not embarrass her in front of the whole wide world. Like, come on. And so that's why I got so mad with the Love and Huntsville marriage crowd because Melanie was going through what she was going through with her divorce and she was making it a point to want to make Tisha be in the same boat that she's in. And maybe Tisha is in the same boat she's in. But until you can provide some concrete receipts, 
We saw Arian Curry. Until you can provide some concrete receipts, leave that lady alone. And I'm going to tell you, that's the same thing with Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Damon right now. Everybody on there has had marital problems. Now, I'm not going to lie. Dr. Heavenly bring a lot of this shit on herself because she always on there speaking on the people marriage. And she makes it a point to jab at them by saying, my marriage perfect. Me and my man had sex every night. She do it to jab at them. So because they've had marital problems and Dr. Heavenly laughs at them, they want to see her go through some marital stuff so bad. And that is why they come at her the way that she do. But until y'all bring Mariah old receipts, I don't want to hear no more about Dr. Damon cheating on Heavenly. And I don't understand why y'all are so happy to want to see somebody's family be towed up. Oh, oh, this new, oh, this new, this new thing. When you do like this, it makes your thumb go up. I didn't even realize that. Or did one of y'all do it? Until I see, see I, it was a thumb. It's these white people in the background with their one token Negro in the back. Now, I don't know why Toby back there. Terrell. Terrell, a homosexual. He a homosexual. And they wouldn't, y'all wouldn't accept him in the black church. So now he back there with the white folks. Anyway. Moving right along, we got to move on to a, a little more serious story, y'all. The 200 and something bodies found dead. I mean, found dead. Lord, if they bodies, they already dead. Uh, somebody said Terrell lost and adopted. Child, you better run. You see how the, the blind side people took that black boy story and took all his damn money. White people can't be trusted. I don't give a damn if they're the Pescatarian church, the Presbyterian, the Episcopalian church or not. Don't you trust them damn folks? Especially this one right here, especially the one next to the one that looked like Dr. Simone, the one that's standing next to the behind the one that Dr. Simone on this side right here. Huh? Don't don't trust her. Uh uh. That one right there, she looked like she'll put antifreeze in your food. And this one right here, she looked like she red head, red, red look like she an alcoholic, and that she'll go open up a mortgage in your name. But let's talk about let's get serious for a minute. Let's talk about those 215 bodies that they found in Jackson, Mississippi. Now, I have ties to Mississippi. Uh, my family, a large part of my dad's family is Grenada, Mississippi. I've got a, a, a aunt and other family members that actually live in Jackson. My brother lives in Tunica. I've got a rich, a rich deep history with the, the Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee area. I don't understand for the life of me why the National Guard has not been sent to Jackson. The Army Reserve has not been sent to Jackson. I don't understand why President Biden, Kamala, Condoleezza Rice, I mean, hell, I don't want to put Michelle and Barack in this, Oprah, Tyler Perry, Michael Jordan, LeBron James. I don't know why none of these people have been to Jackson. This Y'all around here fucking talking about aliens and stupid ass bullshit like that. In my honest opinion, this story and this mystery is as large as that alien situation. We need to figure out how in the hell 215 bodies were buried behind a jail. We need to get, this is racketeering at its finest. This is a RICO case. Y'all right here worrying about Young Thug and his criminal enterprise. Y'all right here worrying about the Italian mob and their criminal enterprise. This right here is a criminal enterprise that is operating at the highest of levels. First and foremost, jails have groundskeepers, okay? Jails have 24-hour jail staff. You can't even go throw something away in the garbage can at a jail without somebody seeing you. Do you know how long it takes to dig a grave with a shovel? And that's just assuming that they use the shovel. If they use the backhoe, if they use a backhoe, 
Do you know how much noise a backhoe makes? Do you know how visible a backhoe is? Do you know how many people it takes to take a body and put it in the ground and then cover it back up? Do you know how many people have to be involved in a conspiracy this large to hide 215 bodies behind a jail? Who in the hell died and made that warden Potter's Field? How does this happen? And, you know, I don't know what proper, I don't know what proper jail protocol is or prison protocol because, bitch, I ain't never been. Well, I'm like, I went one time for a traffic offense and they only had me in the waiting area. They said, who bailing out? I said me. They said, go sit over there. And I was able to sit down and watch an episode of TV uh, until my friends had came and got me out three hours later, quiet as a sketch child. I was so drunk and high while I was in there. I really didn't even know I was in there. But I don't live that life no more, so don't judge me. Back to these people in this damn field. These is people, family members. And again, I, I know I ain't never been to jail, bitch, but I know they make you, I would assume they make you fill out an emergency contact form. I mean, hell, when you go... <laughs> You can't even you can't even get on a goddamn boat ride without filling out an emergency contact form and put down somebody's number. I don't give a damn. The most nobodies of nobodies has one person to contact. And I do understand that there are people out there who are completely alone, but you are not going to convince me whatsoever that there were 215 people in the city of Jackson who had no family members, who had no friends, no village members, no high school people to call when this thing happened. Then my second question is, are these people who just died in jail? And they didn't have nowhere to go. And we ain't fucking stupid. We know that these ain't people that died in jail. These are people who were killed on the side of the road, killed in the middle of a raid, killed or botched police pullovers. And then y'all went and hid them. I'm going to tell y'all something. They need to do an investigation and every single body, every ass in there needs to be fired. If anybody who smelled the gasoline coming off the back hole that was used to dig them graves needs to be fired. I, you know, and I'm not one for firing the mayor and all of this, firing everybody when, when people down here did it. Everybody needs to be fired. Everybody needs to be fired. The city commissioners, the mayors, the police chief, the prison warden, every single ass in there needs to be fired because everybody knew about it on one level or another. On one level or another, everybody damn knew about it. Um, and speaking of tunnels and graves and shit, child, these Jewish people don't lost their goddamn mind. They don't built a damn... Uh, tunnel down to the nyc the jewish people child, and when i when i was trying to figure out where was they running to run center man where you gonna run to did they think that they was uh, the holocaust was coming to get their ass or something adolf hitler was coming back quiet as it's kept you might as well call donald trump adolf hitler and i was wondering what the reasoning was for them building this damn tunnel come to find out y'all the young people wanted to expand the synagogue and it was a blank space next to them so they were building a tunnel through the basement until the into the basement area of that synagogue when the older people older jewish people found out about it they called the cement company to come cement in the tunnels and the younger people staged the protest and then that's how the police got called i ain't that some shit and they always want to talk talk about black on black crime and we can't stick together you had the younger Hasidic Jews at that synagogue staging a coup against the older Jews at that synagogue. And now all y'all T done got exposed. The city ought to build the fuck out of y'all ass because now the city has to go in and send engineers to deal with the structural integrity of the damage that they created building a ton of the damn nowhere. If y'all wanted the next building so bad and they said it was empty, why y'all didn't just buy it? 
I'm pretty sure somebody in y'all community already owned it. I'm just not understanding. And the cement company people better than me because I would have cemented y'all motherfucking asses down in there. And, and later on, archaeologists would have found 1,700 Hasidic Jews buried in the tunnel in New York in cement. And they would have been trying to figure out why. I would have just told them aliens put their ass there. The aliens from Miami put their ass there. That, that's, how they put, that's how they got it. They're moving along. High school student beats up teacher in the hallway. Y'all, she tore that woman ass up in that hallway. Excuse me. That student whooped that lady ass. She beat her ass down to the ground, bitch. And when I was looking at it, I was ready. When I looked at it, I was ready to be like, Oh, these kids is so wrong. These kids is bad. Come to find out, the young lady was trying to get to her bag to get her seizure medicine. And what makes this even worse is that, excuse me, y'all, shortly after the incident, the girl had a seizure. So you already know in the court of public opinion, the school board is in trouble. Trauma, because this is going to make everybody feel like that teacher was justified in getting her ass whooped. Then the girl had a seizure too, child, please. I don't know what her last name is. We just going to say her name, Letitia Williams. They might as well go ahead and rename that school Letitia Williams, uh, Letitia Williams High School for the martial arts, honey, because she finna own that whole motherfucking school district. Miss Ma'am, you got your ass whooped for $47,000.63 and then the girl fucking around and had a seizure afterwards. This just ain't going to end well for you. Your union rep is not going to be able to save you at all coming off of this one, girl. This just, I mean, at least if you're going to get fired, when? If you're going to get fired, when? You got beat up. Then you was trying to go for more. And then the girl had a seizure. Lord have mercy. We got to move along because we got a lot on the agenda. I was going to touch on that airplane door that opened up on that airplane. We can talk about that later. Back to migrant affairs. Y'all going to lose your damn mind over this story. So the governor of Massachusetts... Got her Ashley Stewart, white woman ass up on the podium and did a press conference. And she was going to ask the people if they had an extra room in their house, could they please start housing migrant families? Y'all heard me right. The governor of Massachusetts did a press conference and said, no, the migrant people need somewhere to live so damn bad that could y'all please start housing the people in y'all and i mean trying to appeal to people would y'all please be nice and house the people this is the perfect time for me to ask y'all to please be nice and put something in the cash app offering so i can help go build a school and build somewhere to live for the migrant people amen 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 pass the collection plate around urshers we ask for small bills because we ain't got time to make change please be sure to hit the like button too but if you don't want to hit the like button I don't mind internet panhandling. Please go ahead and hit the cash and it's down into the bottom, honey. She going to ask the people, can you, bitch, how about you go fucking do it? You sitting up there addressing the people in your St. John's clothes. You probably live in the governor's mansion, which got six, seven, eight bedrooms. How about you lead by example first, bitch? Your house, your house qualifies for five, six, seven migrant families to live in there. We already know, and I'm not being shady. We already know they don't mind piling six, seven, twelve, thirteen of them in a studio apartment in a one bedroom. You live in a governor's mansion, bitch. I'm sure you got five bedrooms that you ain't using. One of them probably got a treadmill in it that your ass ain't used since God knows when. 
That one migrant family could go in there. I'm sure you got one that you use for an office. A migrant family could go in there. You got a guest room. A migrant family could go in there. You got a basement. A migrant family could go in there. Let me tell you something. Have you looked at America? And I damn sure know you ain't talking to black people because if you black in America, bitch, you probably got a migrant family member living in your damn house, okay? Grandma probably live with you. You no good sister who, who be fighting with her boyfriend, bingo, live with you. You got a sister on drugs. You don't took in six or seven of her goddamn children and you barely make it ends meet. So you ain't even talking to black people. First of all, we waiting on our reparations check before you try to make us be foster parents to grown migrant people. Okay, that's the first thing. So you need to go ahead and direct this to, to somebody else. Matter of fact, if anybody you should direct it to, it should be other migrant people or people who immigrated over here who is doing well. Help they let they ass help the migrant people realize the American dream. But the rest of us, black, black folk, black people in particular, bitch, we still trying to get our piece of the pie. So I know good and goddamn well you ain't talking to us. Okay. In addition, how about some of them projects that you got on the agenda in the budget? Reroute some of the money from the projects that y'all working on, bitch. You ain't got to build a new library. You ain't got to build a new park. You ain't got to build a new city hall. Take that money and reroute that money from them damn project projects that you was working on. How about furlough some of your damn salary, bitch? Since you so worried about the migrant people and want people to come. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, let people, first of all, and I'm not being shady because I'm a human and I'm a humanitarian, but if we're going to talking about priority order of who should be getting housing, I'm sorry, uh, you homeless Americans should be getting first priority over migrant people. And I understand that migrant people come over here for all different reasons. And I am not attempting whatsoever to shade migrants because I understand that everybody just wants to live well. But baby, for you to be in the government and for that to be the craftiest solution you got, the one to pass, basically pass on the cost to the taxpayer. Nah, bitch. Nah, bitch. I tell you what you do. I got a great plan. America won't die if we don't have sporting events for one year. How about y'all take all these arenas and Thunderdomes and Superdomes and amphitheaters and set up a goddamn camp right there for the migrant people and let them stay there till they get on their damn feet? How about that, bitch? How about that? How about that? How about you take some of these civic centers and auditoriums that the city own and the government own and let them people stay there? But you want to ask people, do you know how hard Americans are struggling right now? You want to ask somebody to open up their home and let some random people in that they do not know? Now, in theory, it is a great idea. And in a, in a perfect utopian society, it is an amazing idea. But, ma'am, it just ain't practical. Then you let these people in your house and you got to file a legal eviction to get their ass out. Who going to feed the people? I can understand if you were saying, come sign up right now and we're paying $2,500 a month for anybody who's willing to take in a migrant family. Plus, we'll provide food stamps and medical services. It's bigger than just taking somebody in and letting them. Who going to feed their ass? Who toilet paper they going to use? How they gonna get to work? It was just insensitive and it was insulting. And like I said, before you come to me, when you did that, the first thing you should have did, Miss Governor, Mayor, of Massachusetts lady, what you should have done is said, me and my husband have taken in three migrant families and it's been such a, 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 a eye-opening experience. We encourage you to do the same. Don't have us do some shit, bitch, that you wouldn't do. You got big nerve. And, and a big bike. And a big stomach and every damn thing else in between. Um, let me get to a good story since we run out of time. Church gonna run a little over tonight, child. We probably gonna run about 10 or 15 minutes over uh, if you got anywhere to go because we got a lot to get through. But baby, baby, when I tell y'all these niggas ain't playing with these women about these kids, it don't pay to have no baby from no athlete or no entertainment no more because these niggas is taking these hoes' kids. 
Dwight Howard has just been granted full custody of his 13-year-old daughter and no longer has to pay $3,000 a month in child support to his baby mama. That's right. And y'all going to gag when y'all find out why. Long story short, the woman tried to move to Orlando or whatever with the intentions of becoming a cast member on Basketball Wives. Dwight Howard found out and somehow or another was able to get her ass sold up in the damn legal system with her plans. And the judge awarded him primary custody and he no longer has to pay her $3,000 a month in child support. Now, this is the second time Dwight Howard don't had a bit sold up by that basketball wife. He is not playing. And where the lady went wrong at is Dwight Howard was able to express to the judge that he had no idea about the whereabouts of his child. The lady wasn't communicating with him, so on and so forth. So, honey, now I don't, you don't mess up too. So he got your now. Listen, at the point in which Dwight Howard got the child, I mean, this makes for an even greater storyline if he don't get a gag order against your ass. Listen, you might as well see it through, mama. You don't lost your three thousand dollars a month, and you don't lost custody of your daughter. I'm pretty sure Shiny them dying to eat this shit up down there to the Orlando. So for the likes, for considering what all you lost, considering what all you lost, I hope that you see this basketball wise progress process through because you don't lost your child over it, and you don't lost them three thousand dollars. But child, it takes a special kind of judge. And a special type of fool to give full custody of a 13 year old child to somebody who just was in a sexual assault case and one of dwight howard's complaints in the thing was that his child was dressing sexually inappropriate uh for her age and it was being posted on social media now i don't know what's more inappropriate a 13 year old dressing like a hoochie mama or miss kitty being a stepmama y'all tell me because miss kitty don't look like she dressed appropriate either Miss Kitty don't look like she dressed appropriate either. And don't nobody want no fashion tips or no fashion style from Miss Kitty. And Miss Kitty for the Miss Kitty don't even look like she know how to cook. Oh, Miss Kitty, child. <laughs> Miss Kitty don't even look like her kitty clean. So what's she finna teach a 13-year-old girl about her kitty? That's my kitty. That's my kitty. That's my kitty. Fuck around with Miss Kitty. Your 13 year old daughter gonna be a street walker. I'd rather <laughs> Lord, Q, watch your mouth. I'd rather her be riding Evelyn and be on the basketball wives and be a high class hoe than to be a street walker like Miss Kitty. That's Miss Kitty. Now when your daughter be wearing them rainbows clothes, them clothes from Kato's and them clothes from Dots and them old 1992 hairdos Fuck around with Miss Kitty. That's my kitty. I don't want to hear nothing. But you know what? Miss Kitty caught a stray bullet for no reason because she might be a swell woman. Matter of fact, Miss Kitty is dignified and got a lot of respect for herself because we've yet to see Miss Kitty in the blog spraying the White Howard. Miss Kitty might Miss Kitty just might be a nice mama for the little girl. Um, it's two more things I want to talk about, y'all, before we get out of here. Mama D says Bambi married Scrappy for fame. Do y'all believe? She says Bambi Mary Scrappy for fame because they kicked her off of basketball wise because they found out that uh, all of them had husbands and they didn't trust them around Bambi. I don't know why Mama D got her claws sank in Bambi so deep, but she do not see it for Bambi and she just would not leave that girl alone. Um, Do I think that I think it's one thing to get married for fame or to get into a relationship for fame. Um, I think it's another to start to multiply and have children. 
Uh, you know, if it was for fame, I don't think that Bambi would have had children by Scrappy. If it was for fame, she could have just simply stayed a girlfriend. Once she got on the show, all she would have had to do was hunch safari or something like that to stay on the show. So I don't know if it was for fame. Um, I mean, but hey, we not going to act like we not going to act like we not my, my brother trying to say i'm gonna send your ass some security brother i'm gonna need it i'm gonna need it the way i'm going in trying that's my brother tunica mississippi y'all hey trying i love you brother uh, um we not gonna act like baby man listen if it was listen it was a symbiotic relationship all right it worked for bambi and it worked for scrappy too love and hip-hop was and, and scrappy needed to be tied to somebody and quiet as his cap mom and he, you need to shut your goddamn mouth because if it was not for Bambi and or Scrappy, there'd be no reason for your ass to be sitting up there quiet as it's kept. And I love Deborah. I love Mama D. So listen, everybody got paid. And that's how it's going to be, bitch. If you going to fuck me over, I'm going to fuck you over. Let us all get paid. Everybody got paid. Now, the only thing that I don't like is, according to Bambi, as long as Scrappy been on that show, she make it seem like his money ain't together. That he couldn't get no credit and couldn't pay bills and all this type of shit. And I don't know. I just want Mama D to leave that lady alone. But last but not least, before I get out of here, y'all, we talking about money. What do y'all think about this young thug trial? I just happened to be seeing something today, and I'm like, this shit has been going on forever in the day. How much taxpayer dollars have we spent already trying to bring down uh, young thug in this YSL organization? I just did this whole diatribe about us finding money for the migrant people. They could have took all this goddamn money they using to persecute young thug and gave it to the migrant people. Quiet as it's kept, honey. Either send his ass to prison or let him go at this point because with all the failing government infrastructure, no money to pay teachers, no social security, the migrant people need somewhere to stay. Rising cost of living. Eggs is 99 plus a liver. And y'all spending all this money. And here's the sad part about it. I'm going to go ahead and call it. It's going to fuck around and be a mistrial. It's about to fuck around and be a mistrial. And if it be a mistrial, the citizens of the United States, I don't know if the money coming from the federal or if it's coming from the state or the, or the city because I failed civics. I was too busy sleep in civics class. I don't know where the damn money was coming from. But wherever it was coming from, them people need to go and they need to insurrect. Is that a word? Is that what it is when you come in the building to take over? They need to insurrect the building. It insurrect the people because this has been going on long enough with the money. This has been going on long enough. And it's going to be a mistrial. And we're going to kind of find out we're going to spend millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. And then you're going to be, the, then they still going to keep him in jail. Then we're going to have to fuck around and do it again. Not with my goddamn money. Anyway, y'all, y'all be sure to hit the like button. Y'all hit the like button. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget Sister Brown is serving church plates after church. She got perch, catfish, and whitey. She ain't got no change. Y'all know she old. She don't like her card, her card in that phone and on that computer. So she don't do cash out or Zelle. Or nothing like that. Take exact cash. Can y'all please hit my cash out collection plate? Because we got to get this air conditioner fixed. That Deacon Francis don't fuck up. The woman's bathroom is messed up. We got to get the roof fixed. Deacon Francis don't fuck up the sound system with the water damage. We got to get that fixed. And then we got uh, we got a visiting pastor coming in next week. We got to do something for his honorarium. We just got a lot going on. We, we, we got to pay the lease on Kroger letting us get the parking lot. We got to get a new valet service. We got to buy more refreshments uh, to, to serve out to the vestibule. Okay? And so, y'all just please, I got to give these white people that's back here singing these boring ass songs that we didn't even pay no attention to tonight. I got to give them an honorarium. So, can y'all please... Put something in the cash app collection plate. I ain't too proud to beg. I'm internet panhandling. 
Claudia Jordan already told y'all I'm down here in Miami and I can't pay my rent. So can you please help me pay my rent? Super chat me or put something in the cash app collection plate so I can pay my rent and keep the lights on at the church. And last but not least, guys, whew, I get to come out of character now. As always, y'all, I love y'all so much. Um, something that started out, uh, I ain't gonna lie, in the midst of mess and confusion, and something that started out as a piece of get back, uh, look what it's turned into. Like, we are really having fun as a community, and I'm loving it. Once I get better acclimated with the security, I mean, with the security, with the software, I want to do it, y'all, where I can bring y'all in. We can start, like, talking with one another. We can start doing Ask Dineva and getting advice. Um, I always had a vision. I'm going to tell you this really quickly. Of, you know, doing my own talk show. I wanted to do things off the beaten path, right? Like, I would like for us one day, just, just, just an example. I would love to bring a prostitute on and sit here and talk to her and be like, why do you walk the streets? What's led you to walk in the streets? Um, why won't you get a regular job? I would love to bring on um, a mother or a father that's been on welfare for 20 years and be like, why do you feel like you're stuck on welfare? You know, do you want more for yourself? What happened to your life? These are the types of things that go through my mind. And these are the types of things that I would like to explore on this platform. And now that I'm back in full creative control, the sky really is the limit. And we can do whatever we want. So I thank y'all for rocking with me. I thank y'all for being a part of this. Again, I couldn't do it if it wasn't for y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all for loving me and my crazy bipolar ass. I know sometimes I get on y'all nerves. I know sometimes I say shit that rub y'all the wrong way. I'm not going to always get it right. I'm human. The only difference between me and y'all is that I live my life on the internet and y'all get to see my errors and I don't get to see y'all's. So don't judge me too hard, bitch. With that being said, y'all have a good night and I'll see Oh. We ain't had church service on Friday, babies. We're going to be heathens and whores on Friday. There will be no church service on Friday because, bitch, when I get off of work at the radio station at 7 o'clock, I want to take my ass down to the bar with a rich Cosby and find me a man to buy me free drinks. Because what we trying to do in 2024, get fuck fed and funded, bitch. Fuck fed and funded. And so Friday nights is my nights on the prowl. I will see y'all back here. At 8 o'clock promptly on Monday. And hopefully by then we'll have an air condition fix. A new valet company. I'm not going to promise y'all that the women's restroom going to be fixed. Just depending on how much money we took up in the offering. Thank you and good night.